Now, a lot of people seem to be a little bit uncomfortable with this. They are wondering, isn't there something more about me? Am I not a little bit more than just those fundamental particles? Where's my consciousness come from? Whatever happened to my soul? Personally, I don't think that to describe our observations, our experience of us thinking requires anything more than particle physics. In today's video, I will be reacting to a video featuring physicist Sabine Hossenfelder where she discusses whether the soul is a delusion and whether we could upload our identity into a computer. Sabine Hossenfelder is a renowned theoretical physicist who has infiltrated mainstream media and whom I personally have learned much from. However, I found huge gaps in her theories and ideas and a complete undermining of key pieces of data and research which I will discuss in this video. Starting in 2023, with this video which has made its rounds around social media through a popular medium such as Big Think gives us a clear outlook of the current status quo and the direction in which the mainstream wishes to lead public discourse, the secular cyberpunk delusion of technologic worship and empty materialism failing to challenge the current scientific dogma could lead us into a new kind of dark age which our current failing society is already experiencing. I believe we're at a point where we have enough data, research and resources to create a working scientific framework for the concept of the quote-unquote soul and a better answer and understanding to the questions who or what are we. This will be the short-term goal of this channel and this project, A Rational Divine Outline. Before I move forward, I would like to remind you that if you want to join the growing discussion on consciousness and would like to be notified on the latest scientific discoveries and theories surrounding this topic and how they connect to ancient mythologies and philosophies, please like the video, subscribe to the channel as I'll try to upload at least one video per week as I continue with the outline. In principle, what we are is just a big collection of elementary particles. And yes, it's a really complicated and no one in their right mind would try to describe a human being in terms of those elementary particles. But particle physicists have collected elementary particles in what's called the standard model of particle physics. And those particles, for all we currently know, make up everything around us, the entire universe, including us. Now, a lot of people seem to be a little bit uncomfortable with this. They are wondering, isn't there something more about me? Am I not a little bit more than just those fundamental particles? Where's my consciousness come from? Whatever happened to my soul? All right, I think this is a great way to begin the argument right here. So what she's saying is correct. Everything is made of the same subatomic particles that scientists have cataloged in this standard model. Now, when you think about everything, literally everything in the universe, animals, um, the sky, the sea, the air that we breathe, every single thing, every cell in your body is made of the same thing, of the same material. And I often talk about some sort of a matrix of information, always living in a matrix of information. And and when you, when you think in these terms, you can start talking about the holographic nature of reality. And when you talk about the hologram, a lot of people confuse and intermingle the idea of a hologram with the so-called simulation theory. I do not like that correlation, but when you start thinking about these things, that everything is a grid, everything is a matrix, everything is a hologram, a lot of people like um, Sabine says here, have a huge problem with this, thinking that everything is so material, everything is so uh, blunt. Uh, um, people start asking, where is my consciousness? Where is my soul? Hi, uh, just to begin, I'm going to go deep into all of this, but just to begin the argument, the very fact that human beings can conceive of something else that the reality they are presented with, whether we're talking about our ancient civilizations, just beginning religion and myths and mythology and all of these things, just this basic conception, the very intuition that there is something else. Why do they have intuition? Why do they why why do they feel uncomfortable? They are feeling, they are having an emotion, they are having a conscious process that is not quantifiable. Um, and I'm going to go a little bit in neurobiology in just a second, she's going to mention it, but the very fact that we can feel, that we can conceive, that we can conceptualize something 
else than the basic reality that the subatomic particles, these clusters of subatomic particles that she's talking about, tells us that there could be something else. Dies a little bit with Carl Jung and his idea of the human subconscious. Personally, I don't think that to describe our observations, our experience of us thinking requires anything more than particle physics. I'm happy to leave the understanding of consciousness to neurobiologists or whatever those fields are called. But I also don't think that we need to add anything to the fundamental laws of nature that we have collected in physics. I think it's, it's sufficient. All right, to understand the experience of us, she says that you don't need anything else but uh, particle physics. To understand the experience of us, this is a big question, this is a big statement right here, to understand the experience of us. What she's doing here is completely and totally undermining the big problem of consciousness, the problem of qualia. What is to experience ourselves what is to experience the taste of chocolate how could you explain that to someone else nobody can nobody can uh, explain this feeling to anyone else nobody can see the same mental images that happen in your well we think is in the brain but as I've been making some videos there seems to be something else going on there um, I'm not sure which one I, I have in mind right now but if I find it I'm gonna link it somewhere on the screen every link that I'm gonna be discussing you can find it below in the description of this video to, to explain ourselves to explain the experience of force we only need part particle physics where exactly is consciousness in particle physics where exactly is consciousness in the brain this is the main issue of consciousness itself and the fact that she's not even alluding to the big problem of consciousness means that she does not possess at the moment a holistic perspective on the current research and the current issues at large because this is one of the big biggest questions and one of the biggest problems of our current society, of our current science and our current philosophy. So completely undermining this is a huge problem. So she says in, in turn, she's gonna let neurobiologists or whatever they're called to figure out the deal of consciousness while she's using consciousness to even utter a word from her mouth. All right, so why is it important to bring this up, to talk about it, to start discussing it? Because this is pure materialism, pure, unadulterated materialism on a big media outlet like Big Things. So Sabine is also a big figure and she's talking about this like the big problem of consciousness is not a thing. And this has repercussions in society in how it affects the public discourse. And at the same time, we have people like Rupert Sheldrake who has has had um, TED Talks banned because the status quo does not agree with him. But then somebody talking about these things and with a com completely biased point of view and lacking a lot of the current research on things is out there talking to millions. This, this needs to stop. Uh, but in any case, so she talks about neurobiology and she talks about neuroscientists. Okay, so when we go into neurobiology and neuroscientists to figure out the issue of consciousness, what are they saying? Now, one of the things is we cannot have a branch specify uh, reality, specify truth. What we have is the branch and within that branch, we have a lot of scientists and a lot of research and a lot of uh, theories put forward. So we cannot say that neurobiology is gonna uh, do this or do that we have is, science is not an abstract science is is something that is um conformed of many things so in this in this channel i feature a video where scientists proved or confirmed or found in their own uh, scientific research that consciousness cannot be found in the brain. So the argument is if uh, if our consciousness, if our thoughts are our neurons and our, neuron, our neural patterns and our synapses coming together, creating some sort of circuit within our brain, creating a specific emotion, what are we looking at? When we look at the EEG, uh, at the readings of the brain, we see these neural patterns and these neural connections, but this is not consciousness. And there is a philosopher talking in that scientific research who says, is this happiness? Is this neural correlation happiness? No, happiness is what someone experiences. It's a completely different thing. And we cannot correlate the experience 
to to the physical aspect of uh, neural biology. So we're talking about two different things, and she's going to go into this in just a second, talking about the metaphysics, but we are talking about two different things. So neuroscience and neurobiology are going to aid to the issue of consciousness, but they are not going to solve the whole problem. Now, as I talk about these things, um, all what I'm talking about is is not. It is my my own opinion as well, and it is uh, some of the philosophy that I'm trying to work on, some of my own ideas and theories that I'm going to be writing about. But while what I'm telling you, and when I link things, I'm talking about research. This is research, so you can find it below, or you can find it when I when I put it on the screen. Uh, I don't expect you to go through the whole video. Don't watch my video. Don't believe me. Go straight into the article. Go straight into the published research. Do not allow yourself to be deluded by someone who you might think is a bigger mind than you. You have this intuition that I talked about uh, just a segment ago. So go through the articles, go through the research and make your own mind about things. But a lot of people have a difficulty with that. They want there to be something else, this thing that they call the soul. So one possible route that you can take is what's called dualism, that just says we have all those fundamental particles and atoms and gravity and interactions and all that kind of stuff. And on the other side, we have the soul, and it just lives in an entirely non-physical realm, and this is where I reside in some sense. And this is perfectly fine, it's compatible with all we know, so long as this soul does not interact with the physical side, because once it starts interacting with it, they would have to be part of our theories in the foundations of physics. Okay, so the dualism that she's talking about here is not it's not duality, it's not the the idea of good and evil, night and day and so on and so forth. What she's talking about is the mind more more akin to the mind body dualism, which states that uh, mind phenomenon has nothing to do with physical phenomena or with the body. Now in this channel I've I've covered a lot of research dealing with the placebo effect. And if you just think about the placebo effect, this is a known thing. The best video that I made on this is called um, the placebo effect is getting more efficient or more effective and drug makers are desperate to know why. This was some research that was done and uh, an article that was published dealing with how the placebo effect is, is getting uh, stronger. And I go into a very, I've got quite a few interesting pieces of research there. But the most important thing is that this placebo effect is not a simple, um, it, it's not a simple idea of pre-suggestion and having the body feel happy and having to reduce stress level. There's also the nocebo effect. And there's also um, this idea of uh, psychosomatic disease. So when people believe that there's a specific uh, effect that a sugar pill is going to have on them, whether positive or negative, that specific effect happens in, in them, as if somehow whatever they think about things uh, has a correlation. I, I made another another video on, on how... Um, what is called mindfulness and uh, meditating and so on and so forth has a direct effect on DNA. Uh, so how can mental things affect the physical world? Now, a lot of people who follow my channel and who follow the things that, that I've been talking about know this. There's a, a straight correlation with the mind-body uh, problem. So uh, I'm going to be going further into this. But so a couple of questions that I want to ask before continuing the video is... All right, so then after that, she actually goes into the idea of the soul, but she manages this idea of the soul as some sort of imaginary thing in a metaphysical realm that has absolutely no interaction with reality, with the physical world. Now, when we think about um, some ideas like the theory of form from Plato, the idea that there is this ideal tree somewhere in a metaphysical world, and everything we see in the real world is uh, some sort of imperfect tree or a variation of this perfect tree that exists in the metaphysical world, when you think about that idea and the strength of that idea, the core nature of this idea and how everything could be tied 
this reality, we gotta start thinking about things. So, number one, for her to make this assumption, because what she's doing here, what they're doing here in this video, what she's doing here is allowing people to have the idea of a soul, like an imaginary thing that they can manage. And she's saying that's all perfect and fine as long as it doesn't interact with the world of, of physics, with our equations in physics. Now, the question moving forward for the, all, the, all the rest of this video that I want to ask, that I want to put forward, is two questions. Number one, uh, so energy. When we think about these subatomic particles, behind these subatomic particles, there's energy. Einstein said uh, the equivalence between energy and mass, E equals mc square. Now, I made a video that, I'll go into that video in just a second. They actually proved this theory with, a, with, a, with an actual uh, experiment. But in any case, so when you think about this idea of energy, and when you think, uh, she, she talks about gravity and certain things, when you think about fields, let's think about energy and let's think about fields, let's, let's think about string theory, when you go into the basic of things, it goes beyond material, beyond particles, there's pure energy, there is all these vibrations and all this frequency and all these things which um, theoretically create the particles or precede, in a sense, the particles. Now, for her to talk about the soul, we would, have, we would have to define exactly what is the soul in order for her to introduce it as this imaginary thing. But that's the problem here. We do not know exactly what the soul is. So now the question that I'm asking is, what exactly is the intelligence? And when you start tying a little bit into intelligent design, but not in the term... When I, I'm going to be talking about intelligent design. When I talk about intelligent design, I do not mean exactly God, not in, nor any God of any Bible or religious themes or anything. I'm just talking about intelligent design. Intelligent design. Think of nature. Think of forms. Think of cycles. Think of planets. There's structure to all these things. And there's some sort of intelligence which we do not understand. But in any case, go to the fundamentals as she's talking about, and she's going to be talking about red, red reductionism. Talk about the fundamentals. At the fundamental level, we have all this energy and all these fields, which Einstein said everything is about the field. The field is everything. What exactly is the nature of these fields, of this energy, and what's the intelligence behind it? So, for all we currently know from the foundations of physics, everything that isn't in the standard model of particle physics plus gravity is emergent from those particles and the forces between them. And by emergent, I just mean that it can be reduced to the properties of those fundamental particles, like the color of a metal or something like this. And this is something that is known under the word reductionism. There's no observation that we have ever made that contradicts this idea of reductionism, that fundamentally everything is made of and everything derives from the properties of those fundamental particles. All right, so the first thing that I want to address straight away is who is we? She talks about we've never observed, we've seen, was we understand it. Who is we? Is we her organization, physicist as a whole, um, science as a whole? Who exactly is we? As I said, science is not an abstract, and there's a lot of theories floating around, a lot of, um, even in, in the realm of quantum physics, there's not, there's not a final answer to quantum physics. People are still bickering at each other, and consciousness is a big dilemma in, in all of this. So there is no we. When she talks about we, there is no we. There is a lot of people with different theories trying to figure out things. Now, what she's saying is fundamentally correct. Everything can be reduced to subatomic particles. Now, she uses the word reductionism. Reductionism is basically taking big things apart uh, and tracing everything down to a single source, to, to a smaller source. And this can be applied in, in philosophy, this can be applied in science. Um, basically, what she's saying here is everything uh, is emergent. She uses this word as well, emergent from these subatomic particles. Particles. Now, uh, the thing that I'm going to argument is what exactly precedes these subatomic particles? And now, this is the deal with quantum physics and the whole idea of consciousness, where consciousness has an effect in quantum physics. What exactly is what defines these subatomic particles into creating anything? Oh, she talks about uh, metal somewhere there. And when you think about things that are produced by humans, we're not talking about that, we're talking about nature, about the, the original raw sources of reality, planets, stars, air, 
everything that is basic. What is uh, what defines these things in our world? Our very DNA, our very the way that we are formed. We think about energy behind all of this. Now, what she's saying, basically, everything is emerging from these subatomic particles. No, these subatomic particles are emergent from the fields, from energy. And now, of course, she's gonna say, well, yes. If, if you were to ask it, she would say, well, of course. And this still is part of physics. Energy and fields are still part of physics. This is why she's saying the subatomic particles and the forces around physics. And she talks about the standard model and gravity. Of course, we're talking about everything together. But until we define the nature of these fields and this energy, what exactly is energy and what's intelligence behind them, we cannot reduce everything to subatomic particles because we do not understand what creates these subatomic particles. This is one of the issues that I always have with materialists. It goes in circles. Well, how do we create these uh, subatomic particles? But the properties of collective assemblies of particles that in principle you could calculate in most cases, we cannot. There are certainly no particle physicists who can calculate what your eye color will be if you give them the properties of all the particles in your body. But in principle, you know, it, it should be possible. If you had a big enough computer, you would be able to calculate it. So on some level, you could say that, yeah, we are really just constituted of all those elementary particles. And all that we can do comes about from the interaction of those particles. Okay, again, so here completely disregarding the idea of what exactly constitutes consciousness and qualia. Now, of course, your the, the, the color of your eyes, all this uh, genetic engineering, uh, this is basic. This, this, is, this is fundamental. If they manage to reach the code of, uh, of, of, of the basic uh, information in your DNA, they're going to be able to clone you. They've done this. But are you the color of your eyes? Is this who you are? Is this your thoughts? Is this your consciousness? Is this qualia? It is not. So to say that we are all these subatomic particles because we can uh, upload the information from our DNA or from every every single subatomic particle that we are made of into a computer, which with an advanced computer, of course, we could do this. And we could even have the most amazing artificial intelligence virtual reality that we could ever be in. And we might be in an artificial intelligence virtual reality is what I call we might be in some sort of a hologram, some sort of a matrix of information already. And they want to recreate this cyberpunk idea. Um, this is not who you are. Now, when we talk about consciousness, and now I know I, know I lost I lost a lot of people like this point in the video, so uh, just hang on with me for a second. I'm gonna give you I'm I'm gonna give you um, pragmatic, direct examples of what I'm talking about. So I made a video called uh, "How Technology Is Proving the Quantum Field of Consciousness" or something of that nature, and I talk about magnetoencephalography and how there is this technology where they can uh, get readings of your brain based on your thoughts. And the thing is that they don't connect anything to your brain. You, they put some sort of a machine around your brain, and what it does, it tracks the electromagnetic field fields of of the brain activity that you are having so when you're thinking of something or and they show brands of ketchup brands of ketchup to people and they they have this thought process and then they create a magnetic field around their their brain activity so again the field so what's the interaction between this conscious process of thinking about brands of ketchup or anything for that matter relating to all these fields that encompass us. So she talks about the standard model of subatomic particles and gravity. And in between all of that, she includes all the fields that are relevant to things. So we talk about the electromagnetic field, we talk about everything. So if our thoughts have a direct effect on the magnetic field and the way that they do this magnetoencephalography, which I'm gonna link right now somewhere on the screen, Okay, so here is the really, really important part. So if you've lost the track a little bit, just pay attention to this because it's the most important. We're talking about an ontological process of thinking. We think, we're talking about consciousness. When there is brain activity with something that engages consciousness, which is um, the brands of ketchup or whatever, anything, creates brain activity. It's that relationship between the physical, the neural patterns and synapses, and the specific conscious experience. 
Now, this, um, what, what scientists don't know and don't understand is how these uh, synapses and this electricity creates the thoughts and where are they? Where are the mental images? Where is the qualia? So all of this is together. But the fact that even these thoughts affect the magnetic field around us we're talking about this ontological process of consciousness expanding not only through the synapses and the electricity in the brain but outside into the larger field the larger electromagnetic field so what this means is that somehow our conscious thoughts are not isolated to our neurons and our synapses but rather they might be connected to the fields around us and these fields are, are what she's talking about are the things that are in the standard model the gravitational field the electromagnetic field whatever any field that you want to talk about so now i link that about magnetoencephalography just think about it look into the research look into the things now uh, i i mentioned before she she says we we haven't we have never observed we, we, who is we going to the ideas of rupert sheldrake rupert sheldrake and his morphic resonance he talks about this and how be behind forms there might be all these fields of information of intelligence which create the forms in the first place uh, now he calls them morphic fields and this is he's got his own interpretation but we might be talking about all the fields that we know the electromagnetic fields everything that is in quantum field theory the quantum field everything that is between inside this standard model so the fact that we have this consciousness affecting what's inside the standard model means that there's a very good chance that consciousness is tied within physicality in a non-physical aspect of this whole physicality is the connection between the non-physical and the metaphysical what quantum physics does is to look at that specific moment where when the wave function creates particles the non-physical and the physical and now if you go into ancient philosophies just think about the duality between the what they used to call the quote-unquote spirit and the flesh we are talking about the same thing even though that might be an entirely useless description of us it's nevertheless correct but i think that actually we're much more than that on a different level you could say we're somewhat less than that by which i mean that what's important about us is not the particles that we are made of it's what those particles can do and that's what's contained in the information of how those particles are put together. That they make up a human body, someone who can walk and talk and think and write books or fly to the moon. Where does this come from? Well, it comes from the way that those atoms are arranged. And where does this come from? Where does this arrangement come from? Where did the Big Bang come from? Everything is random. This is the problem when discussing with, uh, when having conversations with materialists. They, they say that everything is random. Everything just happens somehow. And when you ask, what is the intelligence behind that? Behind that, they say there's no intelligence. It just happened. It just managed to happen out of nowhere. And it created these, these humans who go to the moon and who write and who have deep emotional complex, uh, thought process processes and so on and so forth who, who have emotions how do you explain an emotion how do you explain this connectivity that sometimes um, Rupert Sheldrake's uh, Rupert Sheldrake talks about so uh, this conversation goes in circles because there, there has to be some structure behind this arrangement of DNA otherwise we would live in a, in a blob of randomness so there's some guiding principle uh leading all of this so this is this one uh, one of the arguments that i used in the past you are born into a body you do not design your body so who created the body who created this arrangement of subatomic particles you as a as a mind as whatever you know according to her logic your subatomic particles create what your consciousness is what your ideas are uh, you know if you if you think about carl jung's uh, subconscious mind how these ideas repeat across cultures well who knows it, it, it's a weird coincidence because according to the materialist theory, all your ideas and everything you are comes from this arrangement of subatomic particles. So where does this arrangement come from in the first place? 
Let's think again and go back to the origin of these subatomic particles. Where does the particle origi originate? It, it comes from energy. Energy and, and matter is the same. It's the duality. It's the equivalence of these things. Energy equals uh, mc squared. So, um, in, in one of my latter videos, I, I, I made a video called a Genesis in the Lab, something of this nature, where I, I talk about the Polish research where scientists were managed to create matter out of what they were calling pure energy or light or photons particles of light and now the whole nature of light this is this is where we are dealing with in the in the in the terms of the non-physical or the metaphysical and into the physical the nature of light is highly complex so there are some other theories which say that everything is wave at all times and is we use consciousness just to create these particles to create this physical there's all sorts of um, theories that I'm going to be going into but in any case so when we think about these subatomic particles Particles, which according to the materialists everything emerges from what what precedes these subatomic particles again fields energy so in this experiment what they did is they they should uh, they, they shot these photons and through a complex um experiment that they made i you, you know i'm gonna link it somewhere on the screen obviously you can find everything below just go through it don't even watch my video if you don't want to uh i talk a little bit about the philosophy and interesting things that i'm writing on my book and i'm gonna talk about it in just a second here uh but just go into the research and see how it happened what happened is that the interaction between the electromagnetic fields of these photons is what created actual verifiable matter. So, she's saying these subatomic particles are what every, the, the origin of everything and these clusters of, of atoms which create our bodies. It's not. This is not what generates matter. If we go another scale, what generates these subatomic particles are fields energy fields, gravitational fields, the whole the whole unified field theory. You have to look closer at all of these things. Uh, so I'm going to link that somewhere. So that, 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 that's it. This, that's just one step uh, beyond what she is saying. She's saying everything is about having particles. Beyond that, energy and fields. Everything is that. If you go f a little bit further into string theory, vibration and frequency. Vibration, frequency, energy and fields. Now, what are, what are these? What were these things? They're not physical. They're non-physical things. This, that for sure. Another thing, and this is this is the big question. As I said, a lot of people, maybe very few people, got so far into the video. So you've made it so far. Thank you so much for watching and supporting me. What I'm, I'm really excited about what I'm writing about because this is the whole thing about everything. What if, what if this energy, these fields this frequency and this vibration had intelligence behind it how did how did these things emerge and create humans with thoughts with emotions with ideas who look at themselves and create how do these things create cycles and create planets and create stars there's got to be intelligence in this energy in this frequency in this vibration in these fields. Now, when you go into near-death experiences, and this is why uh, my next book is going to be highly tied to near-death experiences, and specifically the scientific aspect of it, the scientific research and the scientific theories that I'm linking to the near-death experience phenomenon. When people go out of body, and I haven't even uploaded this uh, video, I have it already ready, already uploaded on the private uh, section of the channel, but I'm going to upload it for public very, very soon. When people go into the, the out-of-body experience in near-death experiences most of what they say is i became something larger than myself some sort of an expansive sort of cloud something that i had 360 vision i had no body and i could feel other energies around myself what did they become did they become some sort of a field some sort of an energy some sort of a cluster of what they're non-physical at this point they're out of body and they travel at the speed of thought. That's what they say. Does Sabine Hosenfelder has this information about near death experiences? Does she even consider any of these, which are in the hundreds of millions of reports according to the scientific consensus for the future research of uh, NDEs? 
I'm linking all this research in, in, in the book that I'm writing. I'm going to link this somewhere in the screen or somewhere below. I'm probably run out of links already. So I said, I don't do this for entertainment. I am sharing my thought process and my arguments with anybody who watches this video. And this is about research of the most important thing that uh, if, 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 if these theories come together, this is going to be the biggest discovery in human history, in human existence. We're talking about a fundamental working framework, scientific framework for the concept of a quote-unquote soul. And everything ties to the science. All of this energy, frequency, vibration, fields are part of the standard model that she's talking about within physics. What if there's intelligence behind this? What if the, the cluster of these non-physical, uh, subatomic essences, I would call them. I don't know what I would call them. What if this is the soul? And what if all of this has information? And now we're not finished with the video. This is the last little bit, and then I'm going to put the biggest theory of consciousness in it. And I actually think that this is a very hopeful message because it means that in principle, it should be possible to upload your identity and actually not just your thinking apparatus, but your entire body to a computer because there's nothing that stands in the way. All this information about the configuration of the atoms in your body, well, you can formulate it in mathematics and put it onto a computer. I'm not even going to address the ridiculousness of of this materialist cyberpunk dream of uploading uh, your thinking, she says at the end of the first part, your thinking into a computer without even understanding or solving or even addressing as it is in this in this specific video the big problem of consciousness the big problem of qualia we're not even going to address it we don't understand it we don't we can never see another person's mental image we do not have this synaptic nature this this nature of neurons and synapses actually create um consciousness we do not know how memory really works and i have i have i have research i'm not even going to talk too much about it. I'm just going to link it somewhere on the screen or you can find it below. I named this uh, We Do Not Store Memories in the Brain and one of the these are these, the so-called neurobiologists or whatever they're called as she calls them. She, she She's saying, oh, they're going to solve consciousness. Well, neuroscientists are actually talking about this and what, what are they saying in the great majority and I have multiple um, types of research with this. Is that most things in uh, neuroscience and the way that human consciousness occurs, and especially tying with memory, we just simply don't know. Everything seems to be oversimplified, and we just do not have conclusive evidence on how things work. So what they said is that uh, memory does not work in uh, as we think it. We do not store memory in the brain. Memory exists at the cellular synaptic and uh, circuit level. It is... It is, it is these correlations of neurons, but as I said, this is not consciousness. So the fact that we have not solved this and they have this cyberpunk idea of uploading our, our, our intelligence and our body into a computer and somehow recreate what we are is completely ludicrous. However, what I am going to say is that this idea comes from the fact that they are reverse engineering what already happened. This already happened. The human brain is a quantum computer. This already happened. We already we're already operating in some sort of a computer simulation, if you may, of some sort. Our whole reality is the virtual reality that they are talking about. This world of computers. It already happened. This is how they can conceive this idea. This is technology we are barely starting to understand. Our reality is the technology. Our brain is the computer. What is our soul? What is the soul delusion they're talking about? The soul delusion is the information and the intelligence behind all this energy, behind all these fields. What, what, what all of this intelligence, what, what's all of this intelligence at the end of the day is quantum information. So the the biggest theory in consciousness right now and on quantum, as I say, is the orchestrated objective reduction theory, which says that all your memories, all that you think, all that you are, everything that makes you you is not 
as she is saying, these cluster of subatomic particles, but rather the quantum information that you store in the brain. And at the moment of death, what happens is that this quantum information is released into a larger field. Call it, if you go with the unified field theory, call it the quantum field of consciousness, call it quantum field, maybe the electromagnetic field. All of these things that, as I said, are in the standard model, are, are part of the physics, are part of the equations, are part of our, of our visible reality that we understand, even from the perspective of physics. The intelligence behind all of these things might be tied to all of this quantum information. So this qualia, this consciousness might be tied to this thing that in, in a sense it is metaphysical because there is no mass in energy. There is no mass in, in, in all these fields. So what we're looking at is trying uh, this this theory as i said this is called the scientific theory of the soul sometimes i'm gonna link it somewhere on the screen i made a video about it. it's the orcoar theory by penrose and hammer of penrose is a mathematician Nobel prize winner in, 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 in physics and um Hameroff is an anesthesiologist. These are experts in their fields. And now, when, when this is this is the science. This is the idea. This is the science delusion. Everything is quantum information. You are not just your subatomic particles in the color of your eyes. You are the information of your thoughts, of your qualia, of who you are. This this cluster, this individuated unit of consciousness, which at the moment of the releases and goes into a larger data database, um, which this database is in ancient philosophies called the Akasha, called different names, called the kingdom, or whatever you want to call it. And now, okay, this is fine. This is all over the place. This might be woo. This might be nonsense. Do we have another source of data which is tying everything together? We do. We have hundreds of millions of reports of near-death experiences and they're all saying the same thing and we have research on psychedelic experiences and we have research on ufo abductions and you know this is this is the most controversial thing but mo a lot of them are positive as i'm saying i'm going to approach this in a private section of this channel what they say in the peak of the psychedelic experience in the near-death experience in the in some of the other experiences when they talk to these um, beings and so on and so forth. We're all one, everything is one, everything is energy, everything is thought. You go back into the, the Kibalion, uh, the world, the universe is mental, everything is mental, the principle of mentalism. Everything is energy, everything is pure thought. So this is no longer philosophy, as I said. There's there's um, official research on psychedelics. There's official research on near-death experiences, which I'm going to be featuring. There's official research on the extraterrestrial phenomenon. And now, as we are seeing, we're, our quantum physics are starting to go really deep into how this energy creates matter, into how this, there's more to this energy and these fields and the unified field theory than we know. So we're on the brink of a huge discovery that at the moment we cannot say that whether there is a soul or there isn't soul, but there's a very good indication that what we don't know, what we still haven't uh, reached a conclusion for, we still don't know what's the nature of what creates, what's the intelligence behind these clusters of some atomic particles that we are. So there's still hope that whatever we call soul may lie behind that. If you're on the path of finding the truth about reality and our purpose as humans on Earth, the information that I have to share concerns you. After a lifetime of research in philosophies ranging from Buddhism to the occult, I've encountered themes and patterns along some baffling information that is beginning to be seriously studied by science. A rational divine outline, The Ghost of Jesus, is the first iteration of this project, where I analyze the message of Jesus without dogmatism, fanaticism, or religious bias. You can find my work available on Amazon on the link below. If you find this work valuable, consider subscribing, sharing, and following me on social media as it will help others in the same path to find this information. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.